Well, we come to you as just one more happy little couple <laughs> in the middle of this um, sequestering situation that we're in. And, um, you know, we, we thought we would just try to bring a little encouragement your way. We're sitting on the front porch of our house, our car's going by. And here we are. What day is it? 34. 34 of the big lockdown. And this face right here is all I've been seeing for 34 days. Aren't you a better person as a result <laughs> of that? Isn't it amazing how the little things that you usually can just look right by, you all of a sudden start to become a really big deal. Mm -hmm. Like the drawer where he pulls out to get his toothbrush and it blocks the way for you to get your toothbrush. And then, of course, I bring up the, the true uh, perspective. Who designed the bathroom? Whose idea was it? And which. there comes the blame. <laughs> I don't know how it's working for you at your house during these days of such close proximity with each other, but we're being challenged a little bit in the area of communication. We had uh, one of our friends, I was asking him how it was going, and, and um, a couple that we're, we've known for a long time. And, and, you know, he said, you know, I, I don't mean to stand negative about my marriage or anything, but he, he said, you know, we, so we, we, we hadn't really had any, hadn't had any really big fights. And then he looked off the side of him and said, you know, we've had a couple of dust-ups, but we hadn't anything, had any <laughs> big, big deals. To which at the time we chuckled at because we hadn't had a dust-up right. yet. But then uh, last Friday, right before the, the uh, reset of a lifetime video was to be released, um, my wonderful capable husband was hanging some light fixtures for us in a bedroom and he just eyeballed he eyeballed it well yeah you know I, like they they were hanging sort of like this on either said, side of i want the, you to come in here and look the, at this i want you yeah. to come in here and look at this and i said babe they're crooked oh i didn't want, i didn't think you'd notice that i didn't think you well, I've, I had an attitude all along about, about hanging these little, you know, hang over the bed kind of a light bulb things. The, the bulbs don't ever last very long. And then you got to figure out how to change the light bulbs. And then you're worried about the sheetrock pulling out and stuff. So I, I came into it with a bad attitude. I, I have this is so good proficiently to my repented. Soul. Proficiently <laughs> repented. But not before I got mad and had to go do a little drive around the neighborhood <laughs> for, for a little bit. Hey, but we're better. We're better now. We're, we're better now. Yeah. So. Uh, what did we learn from that? Uh, well, we learned from that is that if, if if I'm carrying an attitude about something that I just am disgusted about even the thought of doing, if somewhere or another I don't I, I don't work that out, it will continue to simmer and cook, and it will come up at some point. And and it did, and it did, and I I was wrong to let it become such a such a big deal. You know? Well, and in, on my case, uh, there was a history with me going to Spink and being all stressy, and then we'd get cross-raised. And so I was carrying some baggage from hurts from the past as well. And that's so many times what happens in a marriage, is that you, get, you blow up over something and you think, why did this become such a big deal? And you realize it's not just that moment of the, oh, what was it? Uh, three quarters of an inch that you were yeah, off. Yeah, I just missed it three Sorry, quarters of an inch. It was just three quarters of an inch low. She had the audacity to pull out the tape measure and go in there with a tape measure and and you know. show me what I had missed. And of course, that even made my defensiveness kick to another to another level. So when we got all separated and we were all trying to sort the thing out, I go back in there with the dead gum tape measure and I put it on the wall and she was right. It was, a, it was three quarters of an inch off. So we come back in and redo it, and we're, we're fixed now, we're good. And we're some good. of you listening to this, you're thinking, oh, first world, world problems. She's worried about, she's upset at him because he's putting light fixtures on the wall and they're crooked. Meanwhile, you're trying to change a diaper on a baby with a toddler needing uh, um, something to eat and a seven-year-old uh, jumping up and down on the furniture and maybe your spouse is totally zoned out uh, watching the latest episode of Tiger King or whatever that is. You, 
you have a lot to be frustrated about. True. True. What do you say to that? Uh huh. What do I what do I say to that? Well, that our little deal was not any big deal, but but that that other what you just described, the busiest people on the face of the earth are the moms with little kids. They've got to be everything. They've got to be counselor, they've got to be doctor, they've got to be lawyer, they've got to be physical therapist, they've got to be all of the above. Okay, but why don't husbands jump in more? Why wouldn't you jump in more? You're not going to use me as the perfect example of the husband who was always involved in changing those <laughs> Only terrible because diapers. we have three kids and they don't lie. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true, that's true. I, you know, I, I think some of it can be that perhaps the husband has the feeling that what he gets tired from doing at work is maybe a little more important than what the wife and mom is doing with the kids at work. And that's I a, want to slap him. I, well, no. I know it, and that, but that's not, a right, that's not the right perspective. Well, but, and I would say on your defense, you're always kinder than I am. Let's face it, he's kinder. He covers me a lot better. I'd love to expose him. But, but <laughs> he would always say, I can't ever do it right. I never do it the way you want it done. You know, I, I would complain about the way he'd put the kids to bed or uh, the, the way that he, generally anything. If he tried to help fold the clothes, I had to refold them. If he loaded the dishwasher, I had to reload the dishwasher. And I was shooting myself in the foot by just squelching whatever initiative he would have had to do anything because I was so critical in the way he was gonna do it. Okay, so that kicks into that, that bigger thing, the, where Paul will say to the wives, basically, in that Ephesians 5 passage, the one thing your husband wants most from you is respect. But the one thing that the wife wants more most from her husband is that she is cherished and that she is loved. And so expressing that you are loved and you are cherished um, would mean that I would get involved in the things that are heavy for you, that are, that are big deals, that, the, that legitimately so. The kids, the kitchen, the, the house. But on my end, on the husband's end, for there to be the sense that, you know, she, I mean, I know I'm not going to be doing it all right, and I know there are things I could do better, but it just helps to have a little respect sometimes, just a little respect. Yeah, you know, good job, even though you walk away muttering under your breath. That was, that was a terrible way to do that. But at least it was you were conveying, and which I hope would be at the bottom line of how you deeply feel after the troubled top of the water settles out, but that, that there is, you, you, do, you do respect, you do, you do respect me. I don't know how, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tough assignment for a wife to respect her husband as, as she would the Lord, uh, and it's a challenge for a husband to, to love his wife, and here's the gold standard, as Christ loved the church. Jesus, help us, help us to be able to do that. Well, this little thought has been brought to you on this, the 34th day <laughs> of lockdown. And thus far, both of us are still uh, visible. Neither one of us has <laughs> turned up disappearing, never to be seen again. Right. And if we can make it, if we can make it Absolutely. after 43 years, this is sort of like marriage 101, 101 marriage 101 in the 43rd year. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, they're just some things that you're just going to keep learning and keep working on again and again and again. But because you love her, because you want to go to heaven next to her, holding her hand, and she's the person you'd rather be with than anybody else you know, you work on it. You just work on it. You just don't quit, no matter what. You work on it. We love you. We're praying for you. God's got a plan for your marriage, for your lives individually, but for your lives together. God bless you. Amen.